right, guys. Thought I'd show you uh, my little um, trolling rig. So, uh, got a Canon downrigger here. Works really well. And uh, I'm going to show you how we, uh, how I put this together and how I, how I troll. So, uh, I'm not going to get into baits. I'm just going to show you how the downrigger works. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. I can go into baits and stuff like that afterwards. Um, maybe in another video. My downrigger has a four pound ball that's attached to a steel cable that's attached to the downrigger. My fishing line is attached to the uh, four pound ball using a clip, a quick release clip, so that when the fish comes along and takes the lure or bait, uh, he pulls that out and the rod tip snaps up and setting the hook and now I'm just fighting the fish and not having to deal with four pound lead ball. I like to do somewhere around two miles an hour. Um, and I'm going to pull out, so it depends, it really depends how much line I'm going to pull out behind the ball of the down so I'll show you that here in a second, but. So guys, the question is, is why use a downrigger at all? Well, I fish for stripers, and a lot of time the stripers that I'm fishing, they're down 60 feet. It's tough to get a lure down that deep to where the fish are. A downrigger really helps. Keep in mind that the uh, your fishing line isn't straight out from the ball weight. It's actually going to be at an angle. So uh, depending on how heavy your bait or lure is, is going to determine how far down it swings or how long the leader is, how long the line is away from the ball. Um, the longer that line is, if it's 50 feet versus 100 feet, it's going to be angled down even further. So you have to keep that in mind when you're uh, setting this up. Ideally, what you really want is that lure to go right over top of those fish that are sitting on the bottom. Um, so a good depth finder uh, would really, you know, really, really helps a good, good fish finder. And understanding how long your leader should be and how heavy your lure is, it makes all the difference in the world. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, for me generally, anywhere from 50 to 100 feet. The further away that the line is from the ball, the more it's going to sink down even more. And it depends on the bait. Some baits are weighted, they'll go down more. If you're using swim baits with a long tongue on it, they'll, they'll dive even further. So if you set the, camp, the downrigger at 40 feet, they'll go down another 10 feet. So, um, but anyway, I'm going to put out 50 feet. I'm using uh, a Rapella uh, right now, and it's, this one's uh, floatable. So when you stop, it floats, but when you uh, when you're trolling with it, it dives a little bit, so I gotta be careful with the distance. But if I was trolling deep water and big, bigger fish, um, I may use less or more line. It really depends. One of the big things for me is if I'm trolling in relatively shallow water, let's say less, less than 30 feet, I like to put up more line if I can because. Um, you know, you go over the fish with the motor, and that kind of freaks them out, and gives them time to, uh, to scatter back, so to come back, so um, with the line that far away from the boat. So right now, I'm going to go to 50 feet. There's 50 feet. downrigger itself, there is a very heavy ball. So I'm using a four pound ball here. That ball is what's going to keep the, uh, the lure down under the water. So, 
what you have to do is grab your line. rod in place. You need to release the drag on the rod so that it's free now to go. And I'm going to take the clip and I'm going to clip it onto the line. So right here I'm going to clip my, my line is now attached. So what happens when, when the fish comes and grabs the line, the line pulls out and you're not fighting the four pound ball, you're just fighting the fish at that point. So I'm going to let this go. I've released the drag on my line. And now I'm going to let this go down. There's a little counter on the, a little counter on the uh, downer. I'm going to let this go down about 20 feet. Generally speaking, one turn, one turn equals one foot. I'm going to lock this up, and now I'm going to bring this down. So what's going to happen is, if the fish takes the takes the lure, it's going to pull it from the four-pound ball. My rod is going to flick up and set the hook, and uh, that's all there is to it. Now I'm fighting the fish instead of a four-pound ball. So this is pretty good. I want to get a nice bow, a nice bend in that rod. So hopefully you can see that. Nice pro. And you're good to go. You sit back, eat some gummies, some more heads, you're all set. And guys, don't do what I did one time. One, one time, I had the ball set too low, it hit a log, and must have got wrapped around and almost ripped the side out of the boat. If it had done that, I would have been swimming a long ways to shore. <laughs> Big fish, whatever that is. It's pretty silvery. Yeah, it's a straight bass, eh? And for the love of God, guys, don't do what I did. I had the uh, the ball too low. And uh, it hit the bottom, yeah, and it got caught here. on a log or something, and it almost ripped the side of the boat out. I was lucky that I wasn't swimming to shore. Put him in the net so he doesn't get hurt. Wow, it's beauty. But you're too small to keep. Hey guys, thanks for all the wonderful comments. I'm glad you're enjoying these videos as much as I enjoy producing them. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and head over to my Facebook page, Adventures Outdoors with Frank Zink. As well, I have a Facebook group called Camping Life and it's just tips and things for camping and meal recipes. So I hope you head on over, leave another comment over there. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.